Calligraphy is an ancient art that can be brought to you today through the use of fancy fountain pens. Today we will be using the Manuscript Calligraphy Compendium set as well as standard printer paper. These pens are meant for use in calligraphy which combines art and text together. So first let's look at the parts of a pen. The pen looks a lot like a normal pen besides that ink flows out the tip through a slot in the nib. The ink itself is stored inside the barrel of the pen. To write with the pen, you pull towards you which lets the ink come out. You never need to push the pen away from you. Always draw it towards you. Also, the nib is supposed to show metal on the top instead of plastic. If it shows plastic, then it is upside down. Now that you have the basics, a good angle to hold the pen at is about 60 degrees off of the page. Too high means the pen will not write, and too low will also not draw ink correctly. Find a good angle for you so the pen should sound smooth as you write, not scratchy. You should press lightly down on the tip when writing as to not bend the nib. When you start writing, it is important that you use a medium-sized nib, such as the red or black pen in this picture. The thick nib is hard to write with because of the sheer volume of ink, and the thin nib does not make letters that have different thicknesses. Once you are comfortable with the medium nibs, go ahead and experiment with other nibs. After you have assembled your pen, you will need to store it with the nib down so ink can flow. Then you can write. If you have already assembled your pen and you haven't used it in a while, then try wiping the tip with the damp cloth or making small strokes until ink comes out. At last resort, leave the pen with the nib downwards and try to start it again. So now you can try out writing. Most letters are drawn with the pen at an angle to the page. Start drawing some lines while the pen is at a 70 degree page angle. However, make sure the pen is still at your good 60 degree writing angle. Make straight lines and squiggly lines while the pen is still at 70 degrees without changing angles. The line will become thinner as you move the pen sideways. Try to become confident writing like this. When you feel confident, we can start with our first letter base, an I with no dot. This base is used in almost every letter in the alphabet in calligraphy. The way you write this is, with your pen still at 70 degrees, a quick slash up, a stroke down, and another slash up. This base is not supposed to be big and loopy. The I base on the left is bad, the one on the right is good. The problem here is that there is a loop instead of a slash on the base. All you need is a quick slash upwards. The problem with this I base, however, is that the pen is being held at the wrong angle. If you want, you could try out the blue pen to make I bases, but it might take a while to do. The large nib is hard to use. So far, I have not talked about making complete eyes because they are hard to make with the dot on top. Next episode, we will cover making beautiful calligraphy eyes. When you can perfect eye bases that look like this, you can finally start a letter. The lowercase n is just an eye base with a long eye attached. It is quite easy to do. You just curve the top of the slash on the second eye base. Don't expect that this will be easy to do for the first time, so be sure to try it a lot until your n looks like mine. Now that we can move to more complicated letters, we will first start with a p. The letter P is also pretty easy. The long part is an elongated eye base, and the curve is just a rounded curve. Pretty self-explanatory. The start of the curve should be flat, then it should be wide, then thin, then it should end wide. The stroke is not complicated if you make a good loop with your pen at 70 degrees. The letter B is also very easy. It is quite similar to the P, besides that the bottom of the eye base has no slash at the end. The bottom is also a curved stroke, which is the exact same as the P. If you feel really confident with these letters, then you can move on to an even trickier letter, the E. E's start with a thick curve, which then alternates thick and thin as you loop out of the inner part of the E. Try not to make the closed part too wide. It is easier to make E's if you look at my example and compare yours to mine. So if you can do all of these letters perfectly, then you can learn more in the next episode. Remember to store the pen horizontally when you are done so ink will not flow out of the pen. Stay tuned for more calligraphy lessons.